So we're just going to go through the step-by-step -step process and you need to do is it's buy the land, land yeah. basically. So what we did was we were lucky that we were, in, we were introduced to an agent who was selling, selling land around the area and so basically he showed us a few plots of land and that, that, that's the one that we want basically. And so the first thing that we did was we got a solicitor to come with us, see the person, to see that the person actually had the papers, to say that it was their land. And the other thing was the fact that I, we were looking for freehold land when yeah. we came here, yeah. thinking that freehold would be better. And when I was told it was leasehold land, I was really disappointed because I thought, I don't want no bloody lease. <laughs> Only to find out later that it's the more secure way to actually buy property yeah. in the Gambia. It's not the same as yeah, leasehold and freehold in England. No, it's not the same as leasehold and freehold in England. It's a totally different system because it's government registered. And so everything is down on paper. So if anything from the land is registered in your name, then nobody else can come along to claim that land. Yeah. Or nobody else can come and sell that land. Yeah. So that was the first thing. No, the first Where thing. did you find the agent? It was a co it, my cousin. My cousin is the one that introduced me. Recommendation from my cousin. We got the land. Basically, when we did, after we went, oh yeah, and it's this same solicitor, she's a brilliant person. Her name is Shakina Chinadu. Yeah. And she has practice here for legal consultants which I'm sure Aisha will put all of those yeah, links. Yeah, I'll them. link her information in, in the description. In the description yeah. box and stuff like that. So we basically got in touch with her. She's the one that took us to a Gambian solicitor who went through the buying process and everything. And then after the land was bought and secured, we then, Shikina then introduced us to an architect. So this is stage number two? That's stage number two. Yeah. Shakina then introduces us to an architect who then draws up plans for us. And the plan, I mean, we gave him ideas as to what we wanted and drew up the plans for us and we looked at them and then we thought, okay, we'll go with this particular plan. Mm -hmm. And the cost of actually doing that was about 35,000 Dallas. I'll put the, I'll convert into each. Yes, yeah. exactly. And each currency. Each currency. And basically that was 35,000 for the drawings. And we had to pay 7,000 Dallas to physical planning yeah. to actually sort of approve the drawings. We were told that after that process of going through, uh, putting, it, putting the application into physical planning, it was then okay to go ahead and then just start doing what needs to be done on site. So basically the first thing that we did on site was to actually sort of have a borehole done. So I suppose that's stage three, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so stage one obviously is the curing the land. Then, yes. Stage two was the architectural drawings. drawings. And then stage three was actually mm. going to the land and starting the work, starting. which you started with the borehole. Yeah, which I started with the For people borehole. that don't know what a borehole is, it's, it's um, where you drill down. About, yes, it's about sometimes you have to drill down as far as 21 meters into the ground yeah and then you can you can um, access water you that can way. access water that way so yeah. that you're not sort of reliant on like say nawick yeah whose water supply can sometimes be a bit erratic yeah so mm -hmm. what what they do is they they put it on a stilt mm -hmm. and then you have like the water container yeah, above it or some places you just have it on the floor actually yeah, yeah. depending on the space mm -hmm. on your compound yes 
And then after the borehole was done, that's when Chikina again introduced us to limb contractors, mm. people that do foundation, all kinds of works basically. Yeah. And the particular and reliable people. Reliable people. <laughs> hard, hard working Gambians. Yeah, really, yeah, really yeah, hard yeah. working Gambians. Yeah. I can't stress that enough. I really can't stress yeah, that they, enough. They've really done a great job. Yes. So first of all, the first person that we were introduced to was a guy called Mansoor and his team. They're the ones that actually did the foundation to the place. Mm -hmm. They did the foundations and they also sort of did the fence to the place. How long do you think that took? Well, the foundation, it took quite a while because we never realized how big a build it was. Yeah. Basically, building first time, somebody gives you a drawing, you think, oh, that looks nice. So, <laughs> have you got the space for it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was only when the foundation started going down now, and then when we saw how it was marked out, we thought, <laughs> yes, but we weren't expecting it to be so big anyway. But at the end of the day, you only do do this thing. Well, I've only this is the first time I've been able. We have been able to do this, mm. and so it was just it was just we just thought we well, so be it. Oh, and before you continue, I remember you mentioned that you made had a contract. Yes. From the beginning. Yes, 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 yes. yes drawn yes. out by the sister, yes, yes, right? yes, 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 yes. That is one thing, before you embark on any of this work, Shikina sits you down with, well, she draws up a contract, which both with you and, like, say, the whoever it is, whether it's the guy doing the foundations, whether it's the guy doing the finished work, you draw up a contract and then you have a payment schedule within that contract as to how the payments are made and, and things like that. Yeah. So everything is clear and above board. We were lucky because where we were building is not too far from where we were living right now. So we're able to go on site regularly mm -hmm. to see what's going on. And yeah. that would be my advice to anybody that's having a build in this country. Yeah, it's better to be here. It's better to be here yeah, than, than, than be in the, in the West, sending money to people who mm -hmm. tell you that they're going to do things that they don't do. Mm -hmm. Or not only that, the, the other advantage is the fact that whilst you're on the ground, you're able to make changes as you go along. Yeah. Because in the West, you can't see whether this room is too small because every picture, picture, picture can lie. The picture can lie. The picture can be taken, the, the space could look massive, and when you stand in it, it's so small, you think to yourself, what the hell is this? But by then, it's too late. Yeah, yeah. If you're on the ground, then you can make changes as you go along. Mm -hmm. That's what we've been doing. Yeah. So I'd say don't. I wouldn't advise you to build too far from where you live, basically. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be building in the country, make sure where, wherever your residence is, is close to where you're going to be building. Mm -hmm. So that you can keep a regular check on it and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Because then that way everything is above board and you have to worry, yeah. basically. There's less worry, because if you're living in, say, in Kotu here, for example, and you're building in Gunjur, it's a long way to go. If you don't have a reliable car, not only that as well, why make that journey every day or every other day to go and see something when it's better for you to be closer to it so that you can keep, you can monitor it. Yeah. The mm. house is still being built. Yeah. So once it's being built, then you'll do the finishings. Yeah, that's Which right. is where I'm coming in. Yes. <laughs> she twists me out. <laughs> no, I didn't. Stop lying. No, stop lying. Anyway, so... <laughs> So that's where I'm gonna come in. Um, obviously, we're gonna work alongside the contractor as well because he knows some of like the windows and the doors and things of yeah. that nature. Yeah. And with Shikina because she knows good locations where we can go and buy certain yes. things. And, yes. But um, ultimately, like the plan and the color scheme and things like that is something, and the functionality um, mm. is something that I'm going to be in charge of. Mm. So yeah, and then I suppose once it's all done, then obviously you can move into your home. Mm. I have a feeling that people might ask, Prices, but I suppose it all depends on the size of your property exactly. and the type of materials you, you want to use, use and that's a bit more in-depth. Mm -hmm. With that, I will link in, as I say, Shakina, she's somebody that can answer more of those type of questions for you. Yeah. And so I'll add her in. I'm also potentially maybe going to do a video with her as well, maybe just go around to check with her, <laughs> go, around, go around and maybe just see some of the different buildings that she's in charge of, yeah. just to show some examples. Mm. And the other thing as well, because I mean, I think there's, there may be other different building materials, but 
the main one that a lot of builds are done with here is just the ordinary concrete blocks. Mm -hmm. We were advised that those don't change the heat even more. And not only that anyway, because I wanted kind of a brick fashion. I didn't want an area where there's going to be too much painting because there's too much maintenance mm -hmm. and stuff. So we chose the earth blocks. So basically they're supposed to be, I mean they take longer to put up. People say it's a little bit more expensive than the blocks to put up. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the day, the benefits are that they're supposed to be, supposed to be a lot cooler. Yeah. So inside, because it's, it's more breathable than like say if you have the, the, the blocks and you, and you cement both sides of them like that basically. So, yeah. so it just sort of, that retains too much heat sometimes and it can be very uncomfortable. Yeah. Because this house is built that way and so when it gets hot in here it can get proper hot. Mm, yeah, it's hot. Proper hot. We have yeah. to have fans going all the time mm. to make sure the place is hot. We don't believe in AC by the way. So. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you want air conditioning, so you there can is have, the option. Yeah, there is the option that you can put on yeah. air conditioning if you want to. But we just didn't want to have to use air conditioning. So we thought we better just use something that's, uh, that's going to be breathable and it won't be too stifling. So by opening windows, hopefully that should then be okay. Mm. We don't know. We'll, yeah, we can't <laughs> we still, experience We still got to experience it. But I just wanted break anyway kind of a brick building that's what i basically wanted which is the reason why we went for that as well yeah. because i know it's less maintenance in the long run it's less maintenance in the long run mm -hmm. and stuff yeah, yeah. There's that we have. oh yeah that's it we've still got to go shopping for tiles yeah and all that kind of stuff because, which i'm so excited because um the roof is the solid because it's going to have a roof terrace on my house yes and the solid concrete was only just sort of poured about two weeks ago mm. And thing and like say every acro jacks and everything need to be put uh, be left in place for at least 21 days before all those could be taken down and then the finishes can then start and i think it's at that stage that right now what they're doing is that they're trying to sort of we've given them plans of the windows that we want yes the shutters and the shutters because we haven't gone for like say the burglar bars outside of the windows which is quite common here. Which is quite common yeah. here, but um, I just don't think those things are wise. It could be a death trap. Mm, health and safety. Health yeah. and safety and all of that, because yeah. if the, you have to plan for any eventuality. If you do happen to have a fire in your house, you need to be able to come out mm -hmm. safely. Mm -hmm. And if you've got burglar bars over your window, then it makes it even harder for you to come out, which is the reason why we're having shutters. Yeah, yeah. So then that way, within the house itself, so that if, like say, and they're gonna have locks on them, and plus some glass, uh, on the glass outside, so then that way it makes it a lot safer for us. And if we do need to escape, then at least we can come out of the house without turning into Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Or roosters chicken. <laughs> or maybe chocolate. <laughs> or maybe chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. 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 So yeah, so basically now as we say we just gotta wait a little bit. Yeah. We've also we also had to choose the design of the you helped with that, didn't you? Oh you yeah, the, the design shot. of the shutters. Yes, of course, because that's my job. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so Aisha found some shutters yeah. online, so mm -hmm. we're going to have those as well as we decided to have the shutters made, the doors in the house made the same as the shutters. Yes, just for the cohesiveness and it will be the aesthetic look as well, yeah. and also for um, lighting yes. purposes, just mm -hmm. to try and bring some more light into yeah. the... Yes, 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 because none of the none of the earth blocks are going to be rendered inside or out. The only place that you're going to need some rendering maybe is in the bathrooms, where you have to have a shower, mm -hmm. and yeah, above the kitchen work surface, mm -hmm. where you need to have, like, say, backsplash. some type backsplash. So those areas are going to be rendered and then, and then tiled. Yeah. Apart from that, there's going to be as little painting of the brickwork as possible apart from it just to be sealed inside and out yeah. once it's done yeah yes so. so okay so the process is initially obviously getting your land yeah which preferably would be leasehold mm -hmm. because you're guaranteed that's government owned land right 
Re it's right? government registered land. Gav government registered land, which it's registered is, through the government. Yeah, so which is a lot more reliable source of land to buy. Than going through our carlos. Yes, and then you have obviously your architect draw up the plans for you, which in turn will also get physical mm. planning mm. Yeah. permit. Mm. Then once that's done, then you move on to doing your foundation and just building your home. Mm. So I hope that's been very helpful. I hope you've learned something. <laughs> and obviously I will, as I've said, um, in Shakina, if you want to know anything about my interior design, you would obviously, you can ask me too. Um, but thank you very much, Daddy. That's all right, my dear. That's my twin. <laughs> well, I'm his twin. But anyway, thank you very much. Please like, share, and subscribe. Right. And for being patient with this video. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm sorry as well because it was my fault why this video is taking so long to come out. Well, not necessary. But well, they were just, they were they just were things. Just things. <laughs> but anyway. Certain things are going on. Yes, you know, yeah. life can go on in it. But uh, not true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's Gambian, by the way. Yes. But anyway, <laughs> thank you again. And see you in my next video. Bye. Bye. Nope. Uh. <laughs>